Thank you, Vittorio, for the nice introduction. And thank you for inviting me to give this talk uh, about my past and more recent work. Uh, as uh, Vittorio in, uh, already said, my main interest is on uh, secondary metabolites, uh, natural products from microalgae. But before starting, I would also like to introduce uh, um, my uh, research institute, uh, the, the research institute where I work. Uh, it, it is the Stazione Zoologica Anton Dorn and it was founded in 1872 by a German scientist, uh, Anton Dorn, uh, that uh, um, with the aim of uh, uh, prove the uh, theory of evolution of Darwin, uh, studying uh, marine organisms. And since then, uh, my institution uh, is, uh, sorry to say, my institution where I work is, uh, um, the, is focused on the research on marine uh, environment, uh, studying the biology and the evolution of marine organisms, and uh, in more recently also for application in biotech biotechnology uh, field from the drug discovery to um, nutritional uh, ingredients uh, and cosmetics and so on, as I will show uh, you during my presentation. Uh, so uh, the natural products uh, uh, has been studied uh, in my group for several years from the ecological point of view, and uh, uh, the. Uh, our studies involved the an approach of chemical ecology. We also studied the biosynthesis of this product in the microalgae and uh, the biological activity in different model organisms. Uh, then the second part of my talk will be more focused on the biotechnological application of these natural products uh, and the potential of uh, microalgae for biotechnology. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the, the, plant, the marine plankton, uh, I here show uh, the two key components of the marine food web that are microalgae and the, uh, the, that compose the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. Uh, microalgae are at the base of the food chain and uh, are uh, the producer of energy and uh, um, uh, are food for uh, zooplankton, and uh, uh, this uh, com the, uh, the relationship among these two compartments are very important since they can have affect upper levels uh, to the fisheries also, and uh, this is why in uh, marine ecology it, it is uh, uh, always been a very important topic to study, and microalgae has always been uh, taught as a beneficial food for larvae and copepods that are very small crustaceans present in uh, zooplankton. But uh, um, the, the, uh, um, the relationship is, uh, can be very, very complex uh, since uh, um, um, they rely not only on uh, abiotic factors uh, such as nutrient temperature, uh, salinity and so on. But also uh, it is important to uh, understand the chemical uh, communication uh, among uh, different uh, uh, species that can be competitors for the same uh, nutritional source, can be grazers or, or predators, um, and also uh, the um, uh, involvement of chemical um, molecules uh, for uh, counteract the pathogen attack, uh, as well as uh, uh, the intraspecific communication, such as uh, for bacteria, the same uh, seems to be uh, true for microalgae. Uh, all these molecules generally are referred to as uh, secondary metabolites because are not involved in the primary metabolites. And they can be um, present in a very small amount. So the study uh, that um, uh, uh, chemical study may be very difficult, and uh, many of these Q are not uh, still uh, characterized. 
Um, in our lab, we focused mainly on the uh, copepod diatom relationship and uh, uh, the uh, in, uh, possible influence of uh, microalgae on uh, uh, their grazer um, um, biology and in particular um, on their reproduction. Uh, I would like also to give a short presentation of the diatoms that are uh, one of the most important components of the phytoplankton uh, and they, it, it has been evaluated that uh, they account for almost 40% of the marine primary production and so it's uh, the main food source for upper levels. Uh, biologically are very interesting because derived from a secondary endosymbiosis and uh, from the um, sequence of uh, the three genomes it's been uh, uh, very um, clear that uh, uh, they have a mixed genome uh, showing some uh, sequence resembling plants, other animals and even bacteria. Uh, um, they comprise a, a huge number of species uh, and uh, uh, moreover they are very beautiful. They have wonderful shapes uh, of, of the silica uh, shell. Uh, the first evidence that uh, diatoms can also be um, dangerous, let's say, for their grazer uh, was uh, in 1995 when uh, um, uh, my group, in collaboration with the French group, demonstrated that uh, um, a monoalgal diet can induce a reduction to zero of the viability of the eggs produced by female feeding on diatoms. And uh, as you can see, uh, looking at the microscope, um, the cleavage was uh, asymmetric respect to the control. And also uh, the uh, nuclei appeared fragmented resembling uh, an hallmark of apoptosis. Uh, as in laboratory, we also demonstrated that this is true in, uh, in the field, since uh, in the period in which diatoms are present very high concentration and also monospecific blooms, so just um, in this case, uh, it was a, a huge proportion of uh, the one species, the Skeletonema marinoi, that was present uh, um, in, um, in the sea. And uh, when we uh, looked at the reproduction success of the copepods, we, uh, we saw that the viability of the eggs produced was very low, even if the production of the eggs was high. So, that means that the uh, um, food was good for pro egg production, but there is something that uh, impairs their viability. While in a period of post-bloom, where diatoms were uh, in a low uh, amount, the uh, egg viability in blue was high. Uh, we also show that uh, uh, the uh, naupli detach from uh, eggs uh, deriving from female feeding diatoms, uh, showed um, an increased proportion of abnormalities. And we uh, also showed that uh, uh, after five days of feeding, uh, the proportion and uh, the severity of the malformation were very high. And this was correlated to the presence of uh, apoptotic uh, tissues here uh, stained in yellow, uh, that uh, compromised the normal development uh, of uh, the copepod larvae, inducing uh, this uh, malformation so severe that it cannot uh, reach the adult stage. We were able to identify uh, three uh, compounds uh, that are uh, polyunsaturated aldides in uh, 1999. Uh, we also demonstrated that uh, in vitro these pure compounds may induce the same effect that we uh, have seen uh, uh, after the feeding with the diatoms, 
uh, both in uh, copper pots and also in sea urchin eggs uh, as model system. But uh, the same uh, effect was also shown on uh, tumoral cell lines. Uh, this inter the interesting point is that uh, tumoral cell lines uh, um, reduce their viability and their proliferation in the presence of these substances, while normal cells are not affected. This is also uh, in line with we are, what we observed in, in copper pots because uh, uh, these molecules are not toxic for the adult, but uh, they only impair uh, the reproduction and the development of uh, uh, very fastly growing cells and dividing cells, uh, compromising the future generation, so having a, a big uh, ecological implication um, that can uh, also, as I was saying before, a consequence of the upper levels. Uh, also in the case of uh, tumoral cell lines, uh, we demonstrated that uh, the uh, anti-proliferative effect of these compounds was uh, uh, related to the induction of apoptosis, as shown here in uh, these images uh, of cells uh, stained with acridine orange that show different degrees of uh, induction of apoptosis with uh, the decadienal here, uh, sh uh, the short name is DD, decadienal, one of the most uh, potent uh, aldides that we isolated, uh, were more, uh, was more active than uh, the other two aldides uh, uh, tested. Uh, how uh, what is the, the meaning of the production of these uh, um, substances in uh, microalgae? Uh, we uh, hypothesized that uh, is a, a sort of chemical induct, induct, inducted chemical defense uh, that uh, is um, um, activated only after the damage of the cell, such as uh, during the feeding of copper pots. So soon after. Um, the aldides are not present in, in, in intact cells, but soon after the uh, mechanical rupture, uh, the production increased uh, steadily, uh, and uh, since they are very volatile, if you remove it uh, with a, a vacuum for a while, they reduce drastically, but the production increases uh, afterwards. Uh, this suggests the presence of an enzymatic uh, uh, pathway leading to the production of these molecules. And so uh, we, we are also interested in understanding how uh, these molecules are produced. Just a brief mention of what uh, uh, has been done on these uh, the, uh, molecules. Uh, by colleagues that studied not only uh, the teratogenic effect that we uh, showed for the first time, but also studied the possible allelopathy, um, uh, allelopathic effect, studying the effect on uh, other uh, diet of species. Uh, that has been proved that uh, they are uh, signaling molecules in. in uh, activated after the damage of wild cells, um, the diffusion of the molecules induce uh, a response in the nearby uh, cells in, and uh, um, promote uh, uh, the um, activation of uh, um, uh, the liberation of other kind, that I will, other kind of products that I will show you in a minute. And so uh, the, the function that uh, these molecules can have are uh, very different and uh, they can uh, have multiple functions at the uh, ecological level. And uh, they also showed some antimicrobial activity. Uh, to study how they are produced and to be able to uh, also understand uh, the trigger of the release of these molecules, uh, we, uh, in collaboration with a group of uh, chemists uh, in, in Naples, we studied the uh, biosynthetic pathway involved in production of these molecules, starting from, uh, oops, <laughs> sorry, uh, starting from 
uh, um, labeled proportion, uh, fatty acid, uh, that in this case it is the eicosapentaenoic acid. Uh, we show that uh, the, the production of these two uh, aldides that uh, uh, are compatible with uh, um, a mechanism uh, involving two uh, key enzymes, lipoxygenase and hydroperoxide lyases, that uh, uh, was just a, a, a way of uh, discovering a plethora of molecules because uh, there are not only uh, the aldides that are produced from uh, this pathway, but uh, starting from uh, uh, two, uh, three uh, uh, precursors that are uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, there is a plethora of molecules that uh, are produced upon bonding on, uh, in uh, diatoms. Also, these molecules were tested as pure, uh, not pure compounds, but uh, as pool of molecules. And uh, uh, we demonstrated that also these uh, products uh, are able to induce apoptosis and uh, malformation in, uh, in copepods. Uh, I'm not showing all the results, but also the same is true also for uh, the sea urchin embryos. Uh, that means that when the, uh, the uh, diatom cell uh, breaks, um, it liberates a plethora of molecules that can affect the copper pot that is eating the, the diatoms. Uh, and uh, the, the effect is insidious in that, uh, as I was saying before, it's not directly toxic, but uh, induced uh, uh, gradually a reduction of uh, uh, viability of the eggs. Um, we uh, also added uh, another step in the biosynthetic pathway leading uh, to the uh, formation of aldides, and we saw that um, we showed that uh, all uh, the fatty acid the precursor for this pathway are released uh, from a lipolytic activity from membrane lipids. Uh, this is uh, uh, very similar to what happens in plants. Uh, because uh, in plants uh, from the membrane lip, uh, for membrane uh, complex lipids, uh, lipases liberates uh, uh, mainly C18 fatty acid, uh, and uh, um, through the activation of lipoxygenase and hydroperox uh, hydroperoxide lyases, there is the production of aldides that are different from the uh, diatoms. Uh, and a plethora of other uh, molecules very similar to oxidipins found in uh, diatoms. There are similarities, but there are also some differences because uh, uh, in diatoms the precursors are mainly C16 and C20 fatty acid, while in plants we have C18 fatty acid. This uh, is uh, interesting because uh, uh, in diatoms there is some similarity to what happens in uh, uh, animals, since uh, the, the same kind of pathway is also present uh, in animals and rely on the presence of uh, a C20 uh, fatty acid precursor. From this, uh, uh, there are uh, also in this case uh, a plethora of molecules produced that are involved mainly in inflammation processes, such as the prostaglandins, uh, leukotrien, uh, um, a lot of molecules they are both can be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory depending on the precursor available. And this uh, led us to the very recent discovery. Through a bioinformatic uh, molecular biology approach, we were able to identify three uh, of the key enzymes involved in the production of, of prostaglandins we were also able to identify the molecules by chemical analysis. And this was really surprising since uh, these molecules are very known uh, in mammals for their involvement in a lot of physiological and pathological processes, but uh, are not uh, present in plants. So this was really surprising because uh, um, we don't know exactly what can be the uh, 
the role of these molecules in cellular, uh, sorry, in unicellular photosynthetic organisms so different from uh, animals. And uh, we are now uh, studying uh, um, the um, other microalgae to understand if this is uh, true for uh, many species or this is a very special speci specific. And um, we will uh, we'll see, uh, it could be a very interesting also way of collaborating with other uh, groups. Uh, since we, we saw uh, that we demonstrated that the atoms are able to produce secondary metabolites, uh, we uh, recently um, decided to uh, explore microalgae uh, not only from the ecological point of view but also for biotechnological application. Since marine natural products are, uh, are really interesting for drug development, and uh, as well as for nutraceutical and pharmaceutical uh, applications. So from uh, uh, a basic science approach, we came to a uh, 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 more applied uh, uh, study. And why are in respect to the ter terrestrial uh, environment? We know that there are many um, drugs that derive from plants, uh, such as the aspirin, uh, the taxol, and there are a lot of examples. But why study uh, the marine environment? Uh, because uh, it is still uh, uh, poorly explored for the presence of uh, natural products that can be um, can have a biotechnological application. But uh, it is very, uh, very promising because the, in, it also a very different kind of uh, uh, habitat. Uh, there are um, hot vents, uh, uh, cold, uh, uh, um, cold seep, uh, and you can also imagine what can be the Antarctic with the cold uh, environment. Uh, and also, uh, all this, um, this uh, uh, pressure from the environment uh, and the competition for survival during the evolution uh, generated a, a high biodiversity that was estimated to be higher than those uh, of terrestrial environment. And this uh, can uh, suggest also a higher chemical diversity uh, for potential new drug development. It was estimated by the US National uh, Cancer Institute that mine samples are have a superior performance that since 1% uh, of the marine samples show the anti-tumor potenti potential uh, versus uh, the 0.01% of terrestrial samples. So uh, this is another um, uh, um, demonstration that the sea can uh, offer uh, new sources for drug development. And uh, natural products from uh, uh, the marine environment is um, uh, recent compared to the terrestrial studies. Uh, since it started, oops, sorry, <laughs> it started from uh, uh, the, the early 70s, uh, but uh, uh, it grew very, very fast, uh, and uh, the number of new product, product isolated is uh, increasing. Uh, the study were mainly focused on uh, um, sponges and cnidaria and uh, phytoplankton, uh, mainly cyanobacteria and other microorganisms. But uh, uh, it was uh, um, all, almost all the group of organisms were studied for this uh, to the same. Thus, the sea can offer uh, a lot of uh, marine natural products that can be developed as personal care, enzymes, medicines, biomaterials. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, already some uh, uh, examples of uh, uh, marine derived uh, pharmaceutical products that are on the market. There is uh, uh, um, the, the main, main, mainly for anti-tumoral uh, um, applications. 
uh, you can see uh, that uh, uh, these molecules derive from uh, different kind of organisms, mainly uh, sponges uh, uh, and macroorganisms. Um, and uh, uh, it is important to, to uh, continue to study uh, the marine environment for the search of new drugs because there, there are a new, uh, um, there, there is a renewed interest in uh, marine biodiscovery also from uh, uh, big pharma since uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, high demand for new therapeutics for microbial infection, uh, novel antitumoral compounds, but it's also important to try to overcome some bottlenecks uh, that are present, some obstacles, uh, to deliver the new products on the market. And uh, uh, there are, uh, in fact, some challenges to be uh, addressed in order to be more efficient and reduce the time to market from the discovery of a new natural product uh, to the uh, application. Uh, because uh, there is still uh, the need of uh, guaranteed access to resources, uh, especially to very deep uh, specimens. Um, it, it is important to understand the physiology of marine species uh, to um, uh, guarantee uh, an optimal production of bioactive products. Uh, and uh, uh, not uh, uh, of secondary importance, uh, achieve a sustainable production of bioactive compounds. Some of these challenges can be addressed by using macroalgae as source for new natural products, since they are still poorly explored for these purposes. They can grow in laboratory on massive scale in photobioreactors, uh, so they can guarantee the uh, huge amount needed for uh, preclinical and clinical study, and uh, are uh, not uh, are environmental friendly, uh, as uh, the collection of microalgae is not destructive for the, uh, the environment. Uh, there are already some applications for uh, microalgae products since they are very rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, uh, carotenoids that are on antioxidants, proteins and starch uh, are also used for the production of biodiesel or for uh, cosmeceutical uh, thanks to the presence of antioxidant, amino acid and polysaccharides. Uh, here I'm showing some examples that are very, very common. Um, maybe some of you already heard about the spirulina that is a, a very potent, uh, very powerful uh, uh, nutritional in, uh, in uh, in uh, ingredient because uh, it's a rich source of vitamins uh, and antioxidants such as beta-carotene, iron, uh, and uh, uh, at the Stazione Zoologica, so we decided to um, um, set up a pipeline uh, for the discovery of new products. Uh, starting from the collection of macroalgae and the selection of species from our culture collection, uh, we, uh, we grow in different conditions uh, to uh, guarantee the production of uh, uh, natural uh, uh, ingredients that can be uh, useful for application. Uh, we uh, have a facility to make some bioassay mainly as antitumoral compounds, and we have uh, acquired recently two photobioreactors photo for the scale up production. Um, in the frame of uh, an European project called Pharmacy, we screened 80 microalgal species in three different culturing condi conditions uh, for a total number of 20, uh, uh, 240 extracts. Uh, and we were able to identify five species with anti-infective uh, properties, 10 species that can be used as anti-inflammatory, and 21 neuroactive leads. Uh, these are still uh, uh, under <laughs> evaluation because the chemical 
uh, characterization is still uh, ongoing. Uh, and here, um, to, to finish, I, I would like to present uh, very briefly one result that we obtained at the Stazione Zoologica. Uh, from uh, um, the microalga uh, Tetrasemi suecica, that is a green alga, uh, with, uh, well known for the high lipid content, uh, we uh, demonstrated that it is uh, um, also able to induce, to reduce uh, the damage uh, in, induced by uh, the treatment uh, with. Uh, 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 hydrogen peroxide. So, demonstrating that is able to recover from oxidative stress cells that are uh, exposed to this uh, potent uh, uh, oxidant. And uh, it, it, the imp um, important thing that is the, the extract of this uh, uh, microalgae is not um, cytotoxic for the human cell lines. Uh, and uh, this encouraged us, um, sorry, um, prompted us to further study the effect of this uh, uh, microalgae. And we uh, showed that uh, uh, it's, it is able to reduce the release uh, of uh, prostaglandins, uh, uh, so suggesting that uh, the effect uh, can rely on uh, the reduction of inflammation processes processes uh, triggered by the uh, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, we tested uh, this uh, extract also on uh, a, uh, a, a sort of uh, um, synthetic skin, let's say, uh, that um, um, after the treatment uh, with the hydrogen peroxide uh, recovered completely uh, the viability after the addition of uh, our extract from uh, Tetrasemi suecica. And uh, these uh, uh, compounds uh, are now uh, patented for uh, the use of, uh, as a sort of regeneration for uh, the epidermal, uh, epidermal tissues. And uh, we, uh, following these studies, we decided to start with a spin-off. Uh, from the, that uh, involved the Stazione Zoologica Anton Dom and uh, our colleagues from the CNR, uh, the chemist uh, colleagues. Uh, and uh, um, the, this new spin off that is called BioSearch uh, has the mission to develop and exploit new mo molecules of marine origin for application, uh, as I was saying before, cosmeceutical uh, and also as drug. Uh, discovery. Uh, I, um, at the moment, to also um, beside the active skin, uh, that is the extract uh, that I showed you uh, before, we have uh, an adjuvant for vaccines, uh, a molecule uh, that uh, shows a very uh, interesting activity uh, as uh, induces cell death. Uh, through a specific uh, um, pathway that is called uh, um, apoptosis. And uh, we are uh, in our portfolio, uh, this platform, this pipeline that we uh, set for the identification of new biotic compounds extracted from microalgae. And to, to finish, uh, um, I would like also to mention something about a new um, approach that uh, uh, is becoming more and more uh, in interesting and uh, used for the discovery of new bioactive compounds. This is uh, especially true for ba bacteria and cyanobacteria, but uh, can be applied also to other kinds of organisms. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, collection of an environmental sample uh, and uh, after uh, the enrichment uh, of target organ can be um, um, we, we can isolate the DNA and uh, reconstruct metagenomic library to uh, then uh, screen 
uh, for uh, bioactivity, uh, identify uh, the novel biocatalyst of, uh, of uh, or small molecules, and uh, uh, finally identify the biosynthetic gene pathways uh, um, to express heterogously in uh, uh, um, bacteria or fungi, and have the, uh, at the end the bioactive products. Uh, how to, um, um, to be able to, uh, address, uh, to use this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, procedure also for microalgae, even if it's really difficult to, to deal with uh, microalgae. But for example, uh, we are studying uh, um, one enzyme uh, that is, is present in microalgae, and we are trying to express it in heterogously, uh, uh, and uh, um, it, it is a very important uh, uh, approach for uh, uh, discovery also of uh, um, not uh, expressed uh, biosynthetic pathways that are present in the genome, but are not expressed and not uh, uh, produce molecules. This is a very interesting topic. Uh, and I hope that will be very successful in the future. So to conclude, uh, uh, it is important uh, also at the, European, uh, the European level to develop and apply uh, new platforms and tools uh, to support the marine biotechnology. And uh, in our opinion, uh, marine microalgae has the potential to significantly contribute to the marine biotechnology development in the future. And uh, this is uh, our group at the Stazione Zoologica. Uh, Adriana Ianora is the head of the department and of uh, the group where I work. And uh, I would like to thank also uh, the colleagues from the CNR, the chemist group, and all of you for your attention.